Good morning, Living Waters, and welcome to online church service uh, number two. Uh, I want to take time to let people get on. I, I've noticed in a, a whole week of doing this now that the notification for the page um, saying that we are online takes uh, 20 seconds or so to pop up. So I will wait uh, a couple more seconds to get people caught up before starting our service today. Good morning, everyone. If you are here, feel free to, to interact. We like having interactive components as much as we can throughout the week. I know it's challenging with so many different things going on in our lives and uh, trying to schedule all that. This is a time where we can gather together as one to be able to um, worship God and to hear the God's word and um, be centered for our week ahead. So, like I said, if you're here, please use the comment section, to, um, say hello to people, now let's let's continue to connect even though we can't meet in person. Uh, so a couple announcements this morning. Living Waters Live. Good morning, Ryan. Living Waters Live. Everything that we do, we tag with Living Waters Live. Woo, Living Waters Live. Uh, this week we've put out uh, almost 40 videos actually between Facebook and well, YouTube is usually copies of ones that can be put up there. Um, so yes, there are plenty of ways to interact. Even though we can't meet in person, we, between myself, Lee and Olivia, and if you did not see Olivia's video this morning, please do, it's beautiful. She prepared uh, 20 minutes of music for us to center ourselves for worship. Um, but yes, we are putting out content constantly. We're gonna keep looking at new ways. You know, this was not something they taught in seminary. So we're kind of figuring this out as we go. Thank you. And Steph, you can move the mouse away from the end video, just in case <laughs> we don't want that happening. Thank you. All right, that. some other announcements. Um, I will say, with this online content, as we're figuring out, Facebook does have an algorithm. So the more likes the video gets, the more comments, the more shares, the more views we will get. And actually, I wanted to share with you that this morning I looked, we have had thousands of views in our content this week. That's pretty cool. Uh, this is a crazy time, and, and we've had some people checking us out that never have before, and that's that's great. We're glad that they can be hear God's good news in this way. Uh, I also got some questions. Why are we doing Facebook Live for service and for the Wednesday service? Well, most of our content is videos, again, because of scheduling can be difficult. But when we have these um, times, like Sunday morning and Wednesday night, where we're able to be live, you can interact. As I see many of you are doing, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, um, it's, so we want to have as many interactive opportunities as we can happen, um, because even though we are isolated, we want to be able to be the church together. Plus, this way, if we're doing live, if, say, you aren't able to, to be able to be here during the time that was set, this video goes on the platform, and I finally got YouTube work this week. It will be on the YouTube page as well, so you can always watch it later. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, speaking of that interaction, we would love, if you... Now that we are officially in shelter in place, um, if you got some time and you are doing something that you find meaningful, uh, some kind of, uh, it doesn't even have to be spiritual even. I mean, anything that you find meaningful, that you wanna share with our community that you think would be a blessing for people, please, please do. Uh, everyone's got a camera, make a video or, or just share a link, whatever you wanna do. Let's uh, keep interacting together and sticking together in this crazy, crazy time. I do want to uh, announce that Adult Forum will be on Zoom at 1030 this morning, uh, Sunday School to follow after that. We do have our next live opportunity is um, Lent Wednesday. Uh, we're doing the spiritual gifts this week. So I did upload all those, but if you couldn't find those, please email me and I can send them to you. That'll be at seven. And we also are praying every day. That's also another live opportunity uh, at 618. If you have prayer requests, please send them to me. If you want your prayer goes to stay private, send them to Diane. We got that system down now. We got a whole week to figure it out. Uh, and I also want to encourage us checking in on each other. Um, you know, it's, this is, an, an un, I think like the word of the week is unprecedented, but a, a crazy time, an extraordinary time. Uh, and I want to make sure that we're, are, we're checking in on each other, that we are staying connected. Um, if you do have pastoral care concerns, I'm only a phone call or a video call away. Um, you know, we did have some folks in the hospital this week, and I was able to, to call and video call them, so that worked out well, because um, the hospital won't let me visit in person. Um, but yes, we still, we want to be intentional about that. And then, of course, my last announcement is thank you. 
Thank you for being patient with us as we figure this all out. Thank you for uh, engaging and sharing and and being a part of this community. I know this is this is very different. It's a shock to the system. It's nothing we've ever done before. But I believe that God is leading us in these efforts. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Well, we had some music center us. So let us begin service together with the greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us all. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your Spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Today's reading for our service this morning comes from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O God, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And now for the kids, sir, and you're probably wondering, what is this thing that I have behind me to my... It's my right, but you're right, your left. Hello, me or stay. No, I think we're good. Whew. Yeah, turn a little bit. Okay. Bear with me. Right. Perfect. All right, and then he tilts it down a little. It's a fan. There, it's a fan! <laughs> so, uh, this is the kids' sermon. Good morning. Uh, well, everyone. But uh, I want to talk about how God is with us this morning. Um, God is always with us but we might not always realize it. And I thought a good comparison perhaps is how we need, and we always have with us, hopefully, air, right? Oxygen, we need it to breathe, to live. It fuels our life, right? This is how God is for us, that we constantly need God. But we don't know air's there necessarily. We know it's not there, I should say, but we can't really see it. Uh, we can't, I guess we're always touching it, but it's hard to describe. Uh, so I thought I'd show you a way that we could see air this morning. High tech here. Watch out. Yeah. There. With the fan, now we can see the air. See how the paper is moving rapidly, right? The, the fan, oh, don't leave me, sorry. The fan allows us to see this air that's already here but this way we're able to see it. Oh, there it goes. Guess God didn't like that summer. Anyway, <laughs> notice fans off and the paper stands still. Right? Faith is like this fan. Faith helps us see God, even though we know God is always there and it can be hard to see God, maybe in, I don't know, very stressful, foreign, extraordinary, unprecedented times, the fan of faith allows us to see that God that is always around us, who is here for us, who we constantly need. Will you pray with me this morning? I invite you to repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. We thank you. We thank you. For your son, Jesus Christ. For your son, Jesus Christ. Though we know you are there. Though we know you are there. Please help us. Please help us. To see you. To see you. In this time of need. In this time of need. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I, in this week of social distancing, I have learned some things. I now know uh, where all the light switches in my house go to which lights? Dun, 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 dun. For example, let there be lights. I've learned how to use uh, technologies like Zoom and, and YouTube Studio and the one we're currently using, Facebook Live, which is still working. Yes. I've also learned that um, this year I'm giving up more for Lent than I originally intended. 
And on a serious note, I've learned how fragile human society can be, and it really is. That one single virus can expose so much weakness and bring the world to its knees. I'm learning what our true priorities and values are as a country. I've become painfully aware of how little control I actually have in my life. I don't know about you, but that's driving me insane. Every day as the situation worsens here and in many places around the world, I'm learning that people are afraid. We're anxious. We're worried about loved ones and about ourselves. We're lonely from isolation. Bear with me, extroverts, I'm with you. We're restless and uneasy from all of this unexpected change. We are dying and we are mourning. We are mourning those who have passed, but we're also mourning all that we have lost. All kinds of plans, vacations, events we are looking forward to, gatherings, our patented and comfortable routines that have been put to death in this time. I've learned that we can't go forward in this chaotic era on our own. We need God and we need each other. We need the church. And as your pastor, I've been trying to learn where God is in this unsettling and scary time. Yes, I already know that God's promise to always be present with us. It's repeated in scripture over and over again. Check out the quarantine Bible study. But right now, I know there are a lot of questions out there with not many answers. People are searching for hope. They long to hear God's voice in this ever-shifting wilderness of unknown. And I long this week to have all of that for you. Answers, hope, and God's message to share. See, I too feel all those things that you are feeling. So one day this week, as I was after praying to God, asking boldly, God, please make me aware of your presence. I felt like I got nothing in response. Sometimes prayer can be frustrating. I don't know about you, but so often in life, I'm used to on-demand everything. Instant answers at my fingertips at all times. Everyone's got a cell phone. I don't like not getting an answer right away, especially when I feel that the whole world is crumbling around me. So I was very disappointed this week. And I went to work on the sermon, hoping I would have that answer for you all to share. I admit, I was a little bit annoyed as I looked at these texts for the week. Oh, John 9, 1 through 41, Jesus heals a blind man. Oh, great, another healing story. Thanks, God. Oh, Ephesians 5, 8 through 14. Mm, light and darkness motif. Cliche. Oh, finally, Old Testament text. 1 Samuel 16, 1 through 13. Oh, that's a passage uh, I'm actually kind of conflicted about. Uh, about God basically telling Samuel to get over the hope of Saul being a good king. Oof. This is what we got to work with this week, huh? And look, for better or for worse, I... I can, I can be a passionate person. I care deeply about this time that we have together each week, especially knowing how we are all feeling. This time together as the church really matters. So I'm very irritated at this point with God, and I go to close the laptop in frustration. When I see a notification pop up, your internet connection is out. You know, the little dinosaur. Perfect. Just add it to the list, God. Set the network. But as the page loads, I see something I missed before. An asterisk, a little tiny star. Specific an answer stuck next to that first Samuel Old Testament reading. And I scroll to the bottom of the page to see we have an alternative Old Testament text this week. Psalm 23. Ooh. That could work. Thank you, God. Sorry, I kind of lost it there for a second. For certainly, folks, right now, we walk 
in the valley of the shadow of death. That famous image is no longer some theoretical that's light years away. The threat of death is all around us. Death has been made very real in these recent days. So much so that it's completely altered our lives. As mortal human beings, we are in the very presence of our oldest enemy in death. So often for a society that ignores death as much as possible, to not see it around us now, reminding us how fragile our single one life on earth truly is, it's terrifying. That's why I want answers for you today. That's why I want to give you hope. For death has gotten our attention. But the good news is God is speaking powerfully to us. What is our answer in this time of crisis? I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Though we are quarantined, God is not. In this time, God is hard at work in our lives. God comforts us. God is hospitable to us who are afraid, preparing a table for us, welcoming us into this time together. God makes us rest. God restores our souls. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. See, I have learned this week that we need to hear these precious words from God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God is with us and God will provide for us. Though we may not be at our optimal best, God continues to be. And God continues to care for the well-being of all God's children. God makes me lie down in green pastures. I don't know about you, but I feel that verse preaching to me today. That sometimes God makes us lie down for our own good, especially in something as an extreme of a situation we're in now, where it's so easy to get riled up. It's so easy to get stressed and panicked and afraid. God makes us lie down in green pastures. For better or for worse, this is out of our control. And friends, there is power in giving this all up to God as we are made to rest. Look, there's a reason Psalm 23 is so popular. It has striking images that speak to the depth of our human experience. You restore my soul, O oh God. What an image in these troubling times. God heals and renews our innermost being. What does soul restoration look like to you? No, really, go ahead and comment. I want to know, what does soul restoration look like to you? I want to know. I want to see. It's going to be different for everyone. And you can always comment on the video later if you don't want to comment right now. But how in this pandemic can we be spiritually born through God for the days ahead? With God, this does not have to be completely lost time. Most of all, I find the ending of Psalm 23 to be the most comforting. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is a promise from God. God is with us in every way forever. Because you know what I've learned this week most of all? Right now, I need my Savior. I need the one who defeated our oldest enemy of death on the cross. I need my shepherd who is always with me in this life and the next one forever. I need my redeemer who, when I'm afraid, I can cling to his promise fulfilled of the resurrection. When I'm in this time of everything is always changing, I need my God who is unchanging from age to age, who is always full of love, grace, and hope. Right now, no one has concrete answers. We have best guesses. 
Therefore, I need the eternal and true wisdom of God. My soul thirsts for living waters. I need that daily bread of God's grace and mercy. In my time of anxiety, I need the Prince of Peace. So much death, loss, and sacrifice all around us. I need the creator of life. I don't know where this is going. That's one of the best answers I can give you today. Therefore, I need the Alpha and Omega, the one who is simultaneously completely the beginning and the end and everything in between. I know how little control I have over my life, let alone the world that we all live in. Therefore, I need the Lord of all heaven and earth. In this time of isolation, I need the constant presence of the Holy Spirit abiding in me. I need this gift from God of the church. Friends, I've learned a lot in this past week. But most of all, now more than ever, I have learned that we need to connect with God with each other. We have known one foundational truth for all the centuries of the church's existence. We, with God and with each other, we are stronger together. We are stronger together. Together, let us fear no evil, for God is with us. And we cannot gather in person, we can still connect with God and with each other. In these troubling times, know that we as the church are here for you. Throughout its history, the church has served as a conduit for God's action, and no virus will stop this. Through our gathering online, through our prayers together and in private, our checking in on one another, God is present with us. In our commenting, in our sharing, in our liking, through our video and phone conversations throughout the week, through our public witness, God is preparing a table for those in the presence of death. In all the ways that you commented earlier, God is doing the work of restoring your soul. Though the temptation right now may be to completely isolate ourselves off, out of fear and worry, God is calling us to be church in new ways together than we've ever done before. Now more than ever is the time to show the world all that God has promised and all that God has bringing to fruition. It's the vital work of the church to share this good news that we hear today, that in these uncertain, scary, and deadly times, you are not alone. This week, living waters, fear no evil, for God is with you. Stay connected to your faith in God in this online community. Rest. Make sure to lie down in green pastures. Take comfort in the promise of the resurrection. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Most of all, share what you have learned in this time of social isolation. Share how you have experienced the good news of all that God is doing in the world. We are stronger together, both with each other and with God. Join us. Amen. All right. At this time, I ask you to join me in publicly confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, we have a little bit of a surprise for you this morning. Hymnal, please. We're going to do our prayers of intercession. Those of you who joined us for prayers last night got a little sneak peek. Hopefully this will be more on key this time. We're going to sing before we start the prayers. Uh, if you have a hymnal at home, the red ELW, it is number 752. But if you don't, don't worry. I'm going to teach you right now. And hopefully this will be someone on key. Anyway. Here we go. The song is called Lord Listen to Your Children Praying. So we're gonna I'm gonna teach you and then we're gonna sing it twice through before we start praying. And uh, yeah, we'll do that. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> so the first one. Lord, listen to your children pray. Give that a try. Lord, listen to your children pray. Okay, very good. The next section. Lord, send your spirit in these places. Give it a try with me. Lord, send your spirit in these places. Very good. Now you already know the next part. Lord, listen to your children pray. Let's do that together. Lord, listen to your children pray. And finally, Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. All right, now we're going to put it all together. We're going to do a trial run, and then we'll do the real thing. All right, so here we go. Join me. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in these places. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Very good. All right. So we're going to sing that through twice. And look, see, if I can sing off key for the whole world, you can also join us in creating content this week. All right, here we go. Let us sing and begin our prayers. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in these places. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us praise. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in these places. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the whole world, and all who are in need. God of insight, open the hearts of the church and the world to all who testified your deeds of power. Raise up voices in your church that are often silenced or overlooked due to age, gender expression, race, or economic status. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of insight, empower us to care for the land and all living things that dwell in it and beneath it. Provide rich soil for crops to grow, bring rain to land suffering drought, protect hills and shorelines from damage caused by erosion. Hear us, O God, your mercy, mercy is great. God of insight, bring peace to all people and all nations. Anoint leaders who seek goodness, righteousness, and truth on our behalf. Guide them in this time of crisis. Frustrates efforts of those who would seek to cause violence or terror. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of insight, you care for our needs even before we ask. Come quickly to all who seek prayer this day. The silence of our hearts are out loud. We especially pray for all those and those we name in the chat. Delivery service people, workers, those who would lose jobs in this crisis. Medical workers who are on the front lines of this outbreak.
accomplished healing through the work of doctors, nurses, physical therapists, nutritionists, and all those who tend to human bodies. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of insight, help this assembly spread all over. Lift up the unique gifts of each person who enters. No matter their, phys matter their physical capacity, cognitive ability, or sensory need. Help us to be creative and brave in making our facilities, our platforms, and our ministries accessible to all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of insight, you call out to those who are asleep and awaken them to new life with you. We give thanks for all of your saints. Join us together with them as your children in this world and in the next. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all the prayers we commend to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I ask you this time to pray the words our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go with God's peace. Share the grace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning. Like I said, at 1030, we will have adult forum and please be on the look all week. We have great content coming out for you. We have uh, morning devotionals, Bible studies, kids uh, programming, movie discussion guys, have some of those come out already. Um, and we're looking for some other avenues that we'll meet and discuss today. So thank you yet again and God bless you in this time. Stay safe and please, like I said, we are stronger together, stay connected. Thank you.